Let's talk about inverters. They are crucial to the development of a variety of electronic designs, including many green technologies like electric buses, wind turbines, and solar applications. But getting the high power density we need for those applications can be a challenge. In addition to that high power density, we also need to ensure scalability, reliability, and manufacturability. Because without them, well, we're not getting very far at all. So how can we achieve the high power density we need without sacrificing manufacturability or reliability? By looking at the Econo and Easy Power Modules from Infineon. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Recent trends in the inverter market have made high power density, scalability, and ease of assembly more important than ever before. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Abraham Marcos from Infineon and I examine how the Easy and Econo power modules from Infineon can help solve common inverter design requirements. We explore the benefits and the construction of these modules and how you can take advantage of them in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Abe. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you, Amelia, for having me on the show. So we're talking about how we can achieve high power density without sacrificing reliability or manufacturability with the Easy and Econo power modules today. But Abe, before we get started, can you set the stage for us and give us an overview of these two families? Yeah, absolutely. Here's an overview of our Econo and Easy family of modules. This gives you a pretty good idea of you know, what the product family looks like when it comes to the power ranges that it can serve. For today's presentation, we're just going to focus on the Easy 1B the 2B and the Econo Dual 3 modules. So these modules can be used in inverters, right? Can you explain where they fit in the system design? This is a typical block diagram for an inverter. The Econo and Easy modules are used in the power stage of the inverter, which is often one of the first starting points for design engineers. One thing I do want to highlight since we have the block diagram on screen is that uh, Infineon does have the full system solution. Beyond the power stage, we have our ICE driver, gate drivers, OptiReg power management devices, RX microcontrollers, and uh, sensitive current sensors. So what kind of applications would these modules be a good fit for? One of the segments that I focus on is transportation. And in this segment, electric buses are a good example to highlight where Econo Dual 3 and Easy modules go. Econo Dual 3 is typically used for the main traction inverter for the electric drivetrain whereas the easy modules are used for auxiliary drives like radiator fan, electrohydraulic steering, onboard charger, high voltage DC to DC boost, AC compressor, and so on. How do these power modules help with typical inverter design requirements? For that, let's take a look at some of the trends. Customers are looking at increasing power density to reduce the size of the system or add more functionality. So here, modules inherently have a high power density compared to discrete devices. And another way we help is through our switching technology. We have our latest and greatest IGBT-7 technology in both modules, along with silicon carbide. Another requirement is that customers want multi-sourcing capability, especially in today's tight supply chain. Both of these packages are standardized packages and have been in the market for several years. Another is scalability. How can customers go broad with their design and meet different requirements for their end customers? Well, in both products, we have broad configurations, which we'll talk about later in the talk. And finally, ease of assembly. Customers want to minimize the complexity and do more integration. So it is easier for them to assemble and have less points of failure. Both packages, again, have features that enable this. Can you give me some details about the Econo family? What about the IGBT-7 solution you mentioned? Yeah, this is Econo Dual 3 module in a nutshell. One of the ways we enable high power density is with our latest IGBT-7 chipset, which reduces conduction and switching losses. When compared to an IGBT-4 chipset in the same package, we can increase output current by about 30%. We also have enhanced controllability of DVDT with this package, and overload capability in the Econo Dual 3 has been increased to 175 degrees. Besides eBus, 
the Econo Dual 3 package is, is used a lot in wind, solar, industrial drives, UPS, railway traction, construction equipment applications. And this is one of the most commonly used packages for drives in electric buses and trucks. This package has been in the market for more than 10 years, and today we have more than 3 million devices running in the field. Earlier, you mentioned that scalability was an important design requirement. Can the Econo Dual help me here as well? Absolutely. In the same Econo Dual 3 package, we can offer in both 1200 volts and 1700 volts. And that same package can be scaled all the way from 225 amps up to 900 amps. What this means for the customer is that they can keep the design common and adjust to their customer's power needs with minimal adjustment. Earlier, you also mentioned that these power modules can help with integration as well. Can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, so for that, let's take a look at what a typical inverter setup looks like. You need some kind of current sensor to measure the current. It is typically placed externally on the bus bar, which requires another part that our customers will have to assemble. With the Econo Dual 3, you have the option to integrate shunt resistors for current sensing, and this reduces assembly complexity and this decreases the points of failure. Customers also get a small package in the end, and we estimate that up to about $50 in system costs can be reduced by going this direction. Another way the integration helps the customers is through our wave ribbon bond option. Econo Dual 3 enables direct liquid cooling with the ribbon bond option, which further increases thermal performance and as a result, increase current capability and increase the lifetime of the module. Can we also talk about the easy modules you spoke of at the beginning? What makes these modules so easy? Yeah, for the other inverter applications outside of the primary inverter, easy modules are a perfect scalable solution. One of the reasons is because they come in several sizes in both 650 volt and 1200 volt voltage classes and offers various topologies in the same package. The other benefit of the easy module is that it can also be configured with automotive qualification, which makes it perfect for auxiliary applications in commercial vehicles, such as AC compressor, electric fans, electric PTOs, and so on. Can you also give me some more details about these modules and how exactly we can achieve high power density without sacrificing manufacturability. That is based on the way the semiconductor chips are packaged within the module. Here on the screen, you can see a breakout view of a module, and you see several bare dies being packaged within the same package. Right away, you have very high power density since you don't have the encapsulation of discretes, and thus you can place the chips a lot closer. Not only do you have very symmetrical chips, you also reduce stray inductance. The chips are then soldered onto the back of the DBC substrate, so heat is evenly spread. The DBC, or direct bonded copper substrate, is a ceramic material that is fully isolated and at the same time has a very high thermal conductivity. As a result, you have very low thermal resistance from junction to case. Because the DBC is isolated, there's no need for any isolation foils or have the risk of moving it out of place and exposing the live life surface. Additionally, we have built-in mounting clamps for heat sink so module stays in place and you can maintain compression of the standard gap pad or gap filler without any additional components. And inside of the package is filled with the dielectric gel. You have a fully isolated module. The other benefit is that easy modules can also be mounted on both the top or the bottom side of the PCB. And here are some of the features of the easy modules that make it easy. The press fit pins that come with the module allow for reduced mounting time. That means compared to a through hole discrete package, there's no soldering of the pins required. And you ha also have the added benefit of reliability. As you press in the pins, a reliable cold welded full contact connection with very low contact resistance is formed between the pins and the PCB holes. To highlight this, Siemens has published a white paper several years ago on different types of PCB connections and their reliability. They measured it as a failure in time or fit rating and the lower is better. Press fit pins have a rating of 0 0.005. Compared to that, Manual solder joints have a rating of 0.5, and automated solder joints have a rating of 0.03. The other option of easy modules is to get it with pre-applied thermal interface material. What we provide supply is a non-silicone phase change material that doesn't dry out and has a better long-term stability compared to standard grease. The big advantage for a customer is no handling of thermal interface material at the plant, which reduces overall assembly effort and costs. And to highlight another benefit, this is a 100% reproducible pattern that has been optimized for this specific module. 
Earlier, we also talked about how these modules can reduce our bomb complexity as well. So can you talk about that in some more detail? Yeah, for that, let's take a look at an example. So here, a customer is looking to do an inverter design using a six-pack topology. They have a target of 20 milliohm RDS on using 1200 volt silicon carbide devices. So for that, you're looking at a topology, something like this. And because it is a very low RDS on, customers may be looking at paralleling discrete devices. So in that situation, you're looking at about 12 discrete devices, some kind of isolation foil in the back because the backside of that TO247 device is live, and then some additional gap filler. With an easy module, in this case, an easy 2B, you can integrate all that into one single module. And with less number of parts to assemble, you also reduce the number of failure points and thus increase your reliability. Another point I want to highlight is oftentimes contract manufacturers cost based on the number of components they have to assemble. So you're looking at savings here too, because you're assembling one component instead of 12. And we can achieve this in a smaller footprint, right? Absolutely. This is a picture of a side-by-side -side comparison of a TO247 against the easy one b and easy 2 b And in this situation, that easy 2 b integrates the 12 discrete devices you would have to use on that previous topology. So Abe, what if my audience wants some customization? Can these easy modules help me here as well? Yep, exactly. And this is uh, where the scalability of the module comes into play. This is an overview of all the different things we can configure the easy module into. We can do multiple different various circuit topologies. There's possibility to add components like shunt resistors, snubber capacitors. There's option to even change components going between different chip technologies. Additionally, we also have a broad range of uh, chipsets available for the easy modules as well. Within the IGBTs, we have our IGBT4, 5, and 7 available. We have diodes available for the easy modules. And we also have our 1200-volt sil cool six silicon carbide and pretty soon our 750-volt cool six silicon carbide chipset. Can we dig in a little deeper into what a configuration might look like? Yeah, so this is an example of some of the configuration or the topology configurations we've done with the module. In this particular scenario, we're looking at what we've done for onboard charger application. So on the bottom left, you see one configuration where we took the PFC side of an onboard charger along with the neutral leg and took that and the DC to DC primary side and integrated all that into one single easy 2B. And in the case of lower power onboard chargers where full silicon carbide is not needed, we have easy 1Bs where we have silicon carbide and IGBTs all in the same package. So Abe, what kind of performance are we talking about when it comes to these industrial grade easy modules? Pretty high, to be honest with you. It's actually very broad. So this is a high level overview of, you know, what the power level capability is. Once you start going beyond the easy 1B and 2B, if you go to an easy 3B package, you're talking upwards of closer to 300 kilowatts. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Abe. Amelia, thank you so much for having me on the show. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.